Hey, welcome to part two of the beginning airbrush uh, series and we're going to talk about workspace and uh, paints. Okay, when you get an airbrush setup, you have to be very careful about where you're spraying. Um, the fumes can really build up in a small room and choke you to death almost, I guess you could say. What I do is I take a box fan, since I work next to my window here, open the window, put the box fan facing the fan out, okay, so that sucks the air out, and I spray right next to it, and that usually works for me. Now, there's other options out there like getting an airbrush spray booth, and uh, those can cost you some money there too. As you can see here, there's some spray booths that are uh, movable and uh, mobile, and there's some that are really heavy and that you have to stick in one spot. Um, there's a lot of different setups to this. You can even build your own spray booth, okay? Um, there, if you ch check YouTube and you go and you type in uh, DIY spray booth, you'll see a lot of videos about how to build a uh, spray booth uh, from very simple to very complex. A simple way of doing it is just getting one of those tubs that you get at the uh, uh, office supply store, cut out the back and put some um, um, computer fans into it and that is actually kind of a cool way of doing it uh, because all you do is plug in the fans into a, 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 C, a PC uh, power supply and then uh, you'll have your power supply right there to um, power your fans. Now when you do that type of do-it-yourself one of the most important things is getting the right fan. Okay, you have to have, get a fan that pulls enough air out to pull the fumes out. Okay, not only that, you might have to watch out about getting certain types of fan. There's some fans that have um, the wires in, you know, the middle of the fan there, and it could, could cause sparks. So you're shooting fumes, you know, through that fan. So you might have problems that where it might spark and you know start a fire or something. So you have to be very careful about that. I've heard horror stories about that, but I've never actually seen it or uh, had anyone uh, actually prove that. Okay, there are some people out there that use a fan that has those wires in it and um, they do okay by it. Okay, most of the time people use, a lot of time in this hobby, acrylic paints is the way to go. And uh, acrylic paints, is, there's less chance of it sparking and going on fire. Now, um, for more complex do-it-yourself type, type of spray booth, I'm going to direct you over to Bad Grendel's. Okay, he has a seven-part series, eight-part series about how he built his spray booth. Now he went all out. He got um, plywood and he researched fans and stuff. So if you ever want to do it, you make a do-it-yourself spray booth, watch that video. Um, he had a big discussion. I mean, we talked about it on uh, Scale Model Addict and uh, with a lot of other people. And he actually goes through about his decisions and stuff. So it's a really cool uh, video series to watch. Um, I'll link it below, okay, uh, on my comments. Uh, on my description for the video. Okay, now let's talk about paints. Dun dun dun. Okay, now this is a huge subject. Everyone has their own preference type of paints that they want to airbrush with uh, and stuff like that. Now, let's just drill down the base. Let's just throw all that crap out of the window, okay? And let's talk about the paints and any paint, okay? You can use any paint to shoot through an airbrush as long as you can thin it at the right ratio, as long as it's thin enough to go through the airbrush, okay? When you load the airbrush with paint, and paint goes out and it shoots through the airbrush, it goes through a really fine needle here in the in the um, tip of the airbrush. Okay, that paint has to be thin enough to get out of that tip. Okay, without clogging it up. If you have, if the paint's too thick, the pigments will clog up your airbrush, and you're going to end up taking it apart and cleaning it out really, really nicely, and go again. Okay, so it's going to take a little finesse, and it is a little. It's in the way it's it's an art. Okay, you have to get the right ra ratios. Now, the type of paint, you could, like I said, you could shoot anything through an uh, airbrush. I even shoot inks. I even shoot uh, washes, as long as it's thin enough, um, through my um, airbrush. You could even mix pigments into a water form and shoot that through an airbrush. You could pretty much shoot anything through an airbrush. You know, um, if my mother was thin enough, I'd shoot her through an airbrush. So, um, now the type of paints. And this is where you get more of a debate. You know, people have their own preference of paint. I prefer Vallejo and Tamiya paints. Okay, someone asked earlier, 
which you've seen. Uh, if you can shoot GW paints through an airbrush, yes, you can, as long as you get the thinning ratio right. This is the problem with GW is that GW paints is really, really odd to thin. You have to get it perfectly right. Uh, there are people that have no problems doing it. They figured it out and what the thinning ratio is for the certain type of paints and the color of the paint on the GW line and shoot it through the airbrush. So yes, you can use GW paints to shoot thin airbrush. Would I suggest it? No, not really. <laughs> because um, I just, just my experience about shooting GW through uh, airbrush, I've had a lot of troubles with it and learned. I've done it before though and I got the ratio right. It just doesn't come out like Tamiya or, or Vallejo paints, okay? Now Vallejo paints, there's a really cool line in Vallejo called Air Color which is made specifically for shooting through an airbrush. It's already pre-thinned and you can just drop it out of the bottle and shoot through it. The other line is the Game Color line. Um, really, really easy to thin uh, for the Game Color line. One-to-one -one ratio and most most of the times one-to-one -one ratio and it goes right through your airbrush. Model color, different story. When I first uh, switched to uh, Vallejo Paints, I had so much trouble with the model color line. Uh, the color, different colors have different pigment ratios it seems like. So not every single color in the model color line uh, uses the same ratio. So I usually start at 1 to 10. If it's too thick I put more um, thin, thinner into it and then if it's too um, thin I put more paint into it. Okay, But it's a lot of adjusting. Like for example I know if I wanted to shoot model color black um, through it in this batch, okay, uh, for this bottle, I have to do about a 120. Okay, if I bought a new bottle, that might change because um, the model color line is really, really odd. I'm not quite sure why it does that. Um, some other colors only need 1 to 5, some colors only need 1 to 10. So, a lot of experimenting with the model color line. Okay, the uh, other paint that I would suggest is Tamiya paints. Okay, and I still use Tamiya paints along with my Vallejo paint. Uh, Tamiya paints, usually, most of the time, throughout the whole line you can just do a one-to-one -one ratio uh, a mix there uh, again for GW is tricky you will have to experiment with that um, so it's all about getting the thinning right now the types of thinning medium um, depends on the type of paint you use if you're going to use enamel paints you're going to have to use enamel thinner if you use lacquer paints you're going to have to use um, lacquer thinner and then for acrylic you can actually uh, use the acrylic so you have a lot more choice choices here for acrylics for example I know me and Les at Awesome Paint Job we uh, mix with uh, Windex uh, for using in Vallejo the other thing you could do is using a little concoction um, that you can mix up for Vallejo paints it's uh, 10 parts um, Air, Vallejo airbrush cleaner and two parts of Vallejo uh, thinner. Okay, but that gets a little expensive uh, to use it as a thinning medium. You can also use uh, water, distilled water. Always use distilled water because uh, that way you don't get that nasty minerals that you get from the faucet into your paint. Um, for Tamiya, I would use I usually thin with alcohol or Tamiya thinners. Now Tamiya has uh, their acrylic thinner and they have their lacquer thinner. I actually use their lacquer thinner. Uh, most of the time, the thin Tamiya paints, and that is a that's a discussion on its own there. Why why I would do that? Uh, for um, GW, um, I believe water. You should only stick to water. I think someone mentioned alcohol too, but um, that's something you're gonna have to check on the net. Now I did mention um, Apple Barrel paints or Dick Blix acrylic, uh, you know, generic paints and stuff, and why you're wondering why I would shoot that type of paint through my airbrush. And once you got the thinning down, you got the color, it you use the cheap paints to paint terrain. Okay? Now um there's a lot of terrain builders out there that sometimes use aerosol cans and stuff to try to get paint on and if you know what I'm talking about, if you spray the stuff on the foam, it'll melt the foam. Alright, I know terrain builders out there have come into that problem. Using acrylics and using your airbrush, you get the same type of um effect and the same ease to uh, get your terrain painted without the worry about having it melt on you. Okay, and that is a great reason why to get an airbrush for terrain building. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, remember, if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, uh, post them in the comments, uh, mail me, or catch me on event, or give me a call. Uh, that's it. Uh, do all the uh, other cool stuff. Uh, subscribe, like, uh, all that uh, YouTube bullshit, and I'll see you out there. For more tutorial videos on how to paint your figures, check out Les's channel at Awesome Paint Job. For cool terrain tips and tutorials, check out Chris at Terrain Noob.